Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Hello and welcome to 2024 and welcome to Meet the Parents well, podcast. Well, people have got to 2024 before they've turned this on, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the first person to welcome anybody. That's what I mean, imagine from just that waiting to bring in the new year until you. Do you remember announced? one year we were at somebody's house, bringing in the new year, but uh, they had IPTV, and when we did the countdown, we were at like twenty eight or something, yeah. and people were celebrating down the street. And we were, we're all, what's going we on? We were on a delay because <laughs> we were streaming. <laughs> <laughs> the new we year. were like behind. <laughs> that was the year I went vegetarian. Because remember, I was throwing mm. the ham under me. Oh yeah, right up to midnight. Like during the countdown, I was eating ham. Yeah, <laughs> the lads are going to be pulling the beans off themselves. Hear about me eating ham? Summer. Yeah, you were throwing the ham into yourself. Is that a, is that a lesbian reference? I'd imagine so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just as all, I don't know what what, girls what, what organ to. am I ingesting <laughs> at this point? Girls will be throwing the ham into themselves too. Yeah, I remember just being like a. Go, I remember this countdown started and I ran out of the kitchen and grabbed some cooked ham from the fridge and threw it under me. We have loads of cooked ham over Christmas time. Chucked mm. some under me and came back in. I thought, ah, that's me now. I love the animals now. <laughs> that's me. You I'm develop a wee speech impediment there? Well, you're... <laughs> Mouth full of ham. Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. How are you? You look different in 2024. Why? I'm only joking because we're recording this. Like, it's still 2023 right still now. Still 2023. Ah, imagine, one of us, imagine one of us died. Before this episode goes out. Before this episode goes out. We people, can only dream. We the can hits. only dream. And people are like, oh my God, he just said, welcome to 2024 and he died in 2023. Isn't I'm it? assuming I died here. Like just, I've seen your driving so it could very it's well more be likely you. to be me. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do you know what's mad when people do die and they live on forever on the internet? Mm -hmm. Like, it, Wasn't it Macklemore said, you die twice, once when you actually die? And then once the last time your name ever gets mentioned. No, that was me in my play. I said that in Bridesmaids. Right, well then, Macklemore's seen your play then. <laughs> Fuck me. Also, I think loads of people have said that. Oh, of course, it's like a... But you know what happened in Bridesmaids, right? Yeah. Oh, I watched it? Yeah, but I say that line, right? Mm -hmm. And it's at a moment that's quite poignant. And it's like the girl who's getting married... Her dad isn't there. He passed away when she was wee. And she's like there about to get walked down the gangway. The aisle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the gangway is the paramount grease call up the aisle. That's when they get married. That's when you get marched down at gunpoint. Yeah. <laughs> she's about to get walked down the aisle by me, her best. Sorry. No, remember what you're going to say. But let me finish. That's a different podcast. What? Oh no. Remember when. Sorry. Listen. For once, let a woman finish. Oh, so she said. <laughs> uh, she's getting walked in the aisle by me, her best friend, right? And just before I walk her down the aisle, it's this like nice moment in the play where it's like, we've got you, we will walk you down the aisle, you, you know, we'll be your, we'll be your da. You don't need no man. Yeah, even though he's not. she walks down to a man. And I hand her a bouquet of flowers that's made out of photographs of her and her da, like a bouquet and I say this line where I go that us and the other the, the actresses all found it quite emotional whenever we were rehearsing. We were like, "That's such a lovely line. That's quite sad." And uh, my character says, "You know, I <laughs> why am I laughing now? Here's a bouquet of flowers. It's it's made up of photographs of you and your daddy because I never. They say that when somebody dies, they die the first time and then they die the second time forever when their memory is forgotten. And I never want your dad's memory to be forgotten. And everyone pass themselves laughing." And I'd be all, Heartless. I'm trying to do proper acting for the first time <laughs> in this whole show. The rest of the time I'm trying to make his laugh. This time I was trying to make his cry and everyone was all. <laughs> but I think it was because of my, because because I said it. It just looked, it sounded sarcastic. It might be how you say a bouquet as well. What'd I say? Bouquet. It's a bouquet. Bouquet, bouquet. A bouquet. A bouquet. A bouquet. Is it a bouquet of flowers? A bouquet of flowers? A bouquet sounds bouquet. like a fancy book. <laughs> Is it a wee bouquet <laughs> at the Christmas day? <laughs> yeah. Guys, comment below, smash that subscribe button, etc., etc. Yeah, is, is it bouquet? Bouquet? It's a bouquet? A bouquet? A bouquet? I don't know. Like it's one. Of them, it's like you know. My sons, um, well, three quarters of them say. Three quarters of your sons is mental that you have to do divisions. I know. I know. You have to do fractions. I know. Suppose you can do fractions for any amount of children. They say mirror. Mirror for is the mirror. Instead of mirror. I know. They say mirror. Mirror. But then your kids would also come in. What did Tom come in and say the other day? Not the name and shame, but it was You're Tom. not my real dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. He came what in did and he say? said, 
He needed to get Charlie's social security number. Uh, we were all, do you mean national insurance? Stop I watching know. YouTube. I know, I know. They're going to say, what's your dad called? And he'd be all TikTok. Just yeah. uh, TikTok's raising him. And it's, I, I'm, it's, it's horrible. It's mad. I hate it. Um, do you remember the thing that you were going to say? No, whenever no. I told you to remember it? No idea. You just, your brain is so fried, Sean. And you haven't taken a single drug in your life. That's right. I wonder is it man healer? Like that's the only <laughs> thing I do take, do you mean? Oh, you're so no? fucking cool. You never know. You're such a bad boy. Texas and Hitler and does a wee bouquet at the Christmas day. <laughs> do you ever, when you were a child, you used to take loads and then just go, I'm smoking? <clears throat> no, because I never had asthma. If I had an inhaler, oh, yeah. I've stolen it off a child who has asthma. Or not all. I'm the bad boy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can't get diagnosed with asthma until you're like five. Something to that point. I thought it was every seven years. I heard it was every you seven years. You get re-diagnosed? Years. No, I thought you like had it when you were seven and then it like goes away and then you get it again when you're 14 and then it goes away and it comes back when you're Are you thinking your blood changes 21? every seven years? No, no. Because your blood does change every seven years. Your luck changes every seven years? If you break a mirror. A mirror. Oh, call that's back. the other... Um, you say... What do you call the bird that goes twit-too, twit-too? An owl. An owl. No, seriously, gone wise. No, that's an old owl. You're saying an owl. An owl. No, nobody in this country says owl. Like you've 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 made that word a sentence. Owl. You've made way more of that word than it deserves. It's the start of that Mumford and Son song. What? I will wait. I will wait <laughs> for yeah. you. That's, but there you go. Yeah, Stars and Rays was great, wasn't it? Very great. Time. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Time. Hasn't happened yet. You doing super bass? Ah, oh, fucking hell! It was. Oh, I was going to say, what are you doing that for? But it's the past. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, nobody knows you. Also, nobody gives a shit. Do you know what I, I know. do you know what I hate? Like, do you know when people be really secret about some stuff and you're all here, here, nobody cares. Hmm. Do you know like their kid's name? Says someone who takes four hours to get ready for a night out. Me? <gasps> are you taking the piss? Yeah. Me? Sean, I would say I, I get... taking the piss. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> So I got about three minutes to get ready. I haven't been on a night out since 2017 either. I was on You're right the other last night. week. You were right, <laughs> right fucking forgot. three days ago. Oh, I bet you I forgot. Yeah. Um, but you know when people are really secretive about stuff that like, what? They're like, we'll know, keep, we're, we're going to do a big reveal. Gender reveals? Hi. Fuck off. Yeah. Nobody cares. No do you know what it is? One of two things. Probably. I, I don't know. Do you know what's worse things. than a gender reveal? People guessing what it's going to be and yeah. telling you. And then somebody, there's always like an old man in the room or a dad or somebody, and they go, I know what it's going to be. And they go, a baby. But ah, it's yeah. a baby. Genius. Uh, <laughs> stick with me. Or when people do, like I remember at both of my baby showers and people have the cards and they fill out like, we guess it's going to be a girl and the time it's going to be born and the weight it's going to be. And you're like, this is such an uneducated decision that you're making here. What are you basing the weight of this baby on? The size of my hole? Like, what are you the basing The size of your it? bump, not your hole. I know, but... That's anal. Dramatic. You're thinking of anal. <laughs> you're pregnant out your back. That's what I generally thought when I was younger. You thought anal was being pregnant out your back? No. I thought if you did it up the front way, you'd have a baby out the front. But if you did it up the back way, you'd have a lump out your back. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. No. <laughs> I did, though, think you could get pregnant kissing when I was about 12. That, and because you were an altar boy? Well, then I would have found the, out earlier. <laughs> no, but in the Catholic Church, you're taught, like, don't even fucking sniff in the direction of a sperm. I know, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like, whenever yeah. we were in school, that's the thing, too. We think we talked about it on the AVF episode before, that, like, <clears throat> of, the, of my last podcast, that you don't realise how, you, like, how difficult it is to get pregnant. You're led to assume, if you grow up in a Catholic community or in a Catholic school, you're led to believe if you even, like... If you can spell the word sperm, you're going to get up a scoot. Yeah, I agree. It's um, The first thing you should get taught as soon as you go into first year is, here, lads, a girl can only get pregnant like three days a month. Like one and a half. One and a half days a month. There yeah. you go. I wasn't taught that. That's why I didn't know. But yeah. It's like, mad. How, how do people not know that? People it, sh- it should be common knowledge. None of my friends knew that whenever we were like all in our 20s and 30s trying to have kids. Nobody... We have, there's a couple of single women watching this and we've just changed their lives. Yeah. Early 20s and they're Start like, the night. what? <laughs> it's my fucking calculator. <laughs> why, would, why would you use a calculator? To figure out when their time is, where they're going to get pregnant throughout the month. Did you use a calendar? What are you using a calculator for? <laughs> you use a calendar? To total up your days and stuff. How many days buck free have I been? 
mm. on your calculator. And um, we asked for questions, didn't we? We did. This we got year. quite a few. Do you know, here, do you know what's madness? How many times a day do people say that the dust that they love our podcast? Yeah. Isn't that unbelievable? That's lovely, yeah. Like it's it's relentless. It's Every shop once. we go into, someone goes, Ah, your podcast brilliant. I'm like, ah, you just watch the clips, but thanks. <laughs> you don't watch the whole thing. Yeah. That's nice, you know. Isn't it? Um so yeah, so there's some there's some questions. And do you know what? And we haven't done it in a while, but the first one of the ones I kept getting was people wanting to know about our at home date nights. Mm. Which we haven't done in ages. Have we not talked about that? We have, I. But people wanted to know, like, a few sort of ideas. We've been so busy, we haven't been able been able to do one recently. But um, they're they're highly enjoyable, highly recommended. The, but we did like we did a few different ones. We did the painting and prosecco. No, painting and pizza. We did because we weren't drinking. We would have painted a pizza night, and then you do oh, that yeah, awful yeah. picture of me. That's great. And then we did the murder mystery night. I don't know if we ever. Do yeah. we ever talk about the murder mystery night? I think we did. Uh, we yeah, did the murder mystery yeah. night. You murdered someone and. I tried to figure out how how you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, actually, you, you run out of ideas really quickly, but then I suppose like there's stuff... You think like, outside the box? Do you know what I mean? You have to. Yeah, and then, you know, good ideas of ones are creating a festival in your living room. Mm-hmm. Putting a tent up putting or two of those... Putting a tent up and watching Glastonbury. Two of those chairs, putting Glastonbury <laughs> on and like mm-hmm. putting on festival gear and just like glue sticking it out in your living room. Yeah, wallies and the poncho. Yeah. Even flood your living room for flood up. to make it really authentic, or piss on yourself, or piss on <laughs> someone else, yeah. rob yourself, rob your Just own tent, throw all your toilet roll in the bin. Yeah, it's the best way. Um, and then there's we did like a spa night as well, where we had like massages and stuff, which was a nice one. Yep. Um, what else could you do for a date night at home? Don't no no just let's. I'm not going to give you all my ideas. Why and have then, you got more ideas? Yeah, of course I do. You haven't mopped them out yet. Oh, I was going to do a Christmas one. So was I. A but couple of months ago. It was too close to Christmas. And I didn't want to go to the hassle of getting everything down from the attic, putting everything up, the tree, putting the tree up. So boy. That is so mad because I was going to do the exact same thing, but yeah. it was like October and mm. I was like, mm, too close. It's too close. If it was in like June, where it's yeah. like the summer sort of time, June yeah. or July, that'd be a good time to do it. One thing you found out about recently was Wham Again. I've never heard of that. You'd never heard. And you were all. Why are people boycotting it? It's a brilliant song. <laughs> it's it's just a wee. If you, so it's just for the people who don't know, I'm assuming other people don't know. I can't be the mm. only person who doesn't know what Whamageddon is. Whamageddon is when you hear the song Wham last Christmas that you're out of the game. And my yeah. question was, what game? And you were like, well, just the game. Yeah, saying there's a WhatsApp group or something, you go right first of December. Be honest, right? As soon as you hear la- uh, Wham last Christmas, you're out of the game. Let's see who lasts the longest. Yeah. And then whether you go shopping, whether you listen to Christmas music in the car, mm-hmm. other examples, then as soon as you hear it, you're out of the game. But that's a sin, because like, is that song by Wham or George Michael? Or is that Wham. the same thing? It's called Wham again. Otherwise it would have been called George Michael again. Oh, I... <laughs> is he in Wham? <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel bad in him then, because... He's dead. I know. Don't worry about it. But beforehand, because like... Go on, you'd be, you be ripping. If you if, if if there was a whole worldwide thing to not listen to your song the whole month of December when you need people to listen to it the most. Yeah. It's a Christmas song. When else are you supposed to listen to it? Pardon? When else are you supposed to listen to it? It's just a wee festive banter game, do you know what I mean? I don't think it's banter at all. I think it's you awful. You don't? Do you think it's very rude? I'm not into it. Um, new Year, New You. Mm-hmm. What are you going to... What's your big plans? Well, I'm going to continue how I left off. Uh, Dan's coming back in the room. Don't worry. You think like there's like a ghost appearing behind you just because the curtain's moving. Yeah. Um, for the past, obviously you know this. For the past um, five, six weeks now, I've done a workout every single day, mm-hmm. every single day without taking a break, and I want to continue that into the new year. What do you think that? How do you think that's benefited you? It's going to make you want to ride me more. No. No. <laughs> What are you? But I think you said it's um, cleared your head even space a bit. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Sort of giving you focus. Yeah, I feel like if you're like if you've ever been in a in a dark place before, and I'm not going to get too heavy, but if you've ever been in a dark no, you're place, not going to get heavy at all. You've been working out. Oh, that's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> going to get lighter. Yeah. Uh, if you're ever in a dark place, the best thing you can do is work on your health. That's the best thing you can do. Mm. 
so that no matter what, when you get up in the morning, you at least feel slightly better about yourself. And you've that focus as well. You've got that thing you and have focus, to do. Yeah, yeah. And it's achievement too. Really is. And we you said like for a couple of weeks you seen me working out and stuff and you were like, But I've I've no time and it's like you, you find time. Yeah. Like when I was at our, our get in in the Grand Opera House for our Christmas show, Elf in Belfast, we I literally started at like I picked up our the van that we hired for the day at like half seven, quarter to eight. And that was me right through to like eleven o'clock that night. But I got a small window of opportunity at five o'clock in the evening and I just went into the disabled toilet in the Grand Opera House and just locked the door and just did a, a, a YouTube video workout. That is one dedication but two so weird. Like I imagine all the Panto staff are like Yeah are there people riding in that toilet? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> just one guy grunting just <laughs> I was literally in my boxers and my socks and that yeah. was it. I was just the guy on the buddy so wall pump it and you're like Ugh. Yeah. And the, that, that's that's classic riding sound <laughs> by the way. Classic riding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but then, yeah. But I think, obviously, that's also, like, whenever you're so busy and you have kids and all, too, it's good to be like, oh, that's a good, that's, an, that's a bit of time every single day I'm going to set aside for myself. Because hmm. there's times when I have uh, our, our two kids by myself and I just put Rocky in his, like, door swing and he bounces about and I get Winter to join in with me until she's bored and then feed her 30 snacks. seconds later, hmm. just feed her something and, you know, attend her at the breaks and... Uh, she's she's fine and you, you you can always find time what did I say to you the other day I blew my own mind you said you don't it's not that you don't have time to exercise it's that you won't make time boom you sound like one of them assholes on Instagram put that in a like, I ain't gonna get you loose three stone this week do you know one of them people who are stop like, eating Sheila yeah yeah it. they're just like <laughs> yeah yeah I get up at half four every day I go to bed at four um, but I think that's the thing I want to do in the new year, though, is I feel like a lot of the time I pour from an empty cup. Do you know, like it's a figure of speech? <laughs> Explain. Like, you've so many people relying on you and you've nothing left to give. Do you know okay. what I mean? Okay. Like, you're pouring from an empty cup. It means that I, I'm I'm depleted. Like, I have zero time for myself. That's what I think in the new year. What I, Like, this new year I want to... <laughs> do is make sure I put time aside for myself even if, like I don't do, I don't give myself 30 seconds of the day hmm. do you know what I mean I know I know you're a workaholic but I'm also and they've got kids and, and there's just a lot of stuff going on so but I and I never like I can remember the last thing I've done that was just just for enjoyment hmm. do you know what I mean that was just like do that it's not work it's not responsibility it's just like enjoy yourself doing that like I mean a long time if not well, I know we've had date nights and stuff, but yeah, it's very rare. So I think, it, like you said to me recently, and it's really stuck in my head, you said to me, I feel like when you when we had kids, you lost about a maid in motherhood. Mm. And then recently you've lost another bit of maid to work because I'm so busy. Yeah. And I think at the end of the new, like, the new year, in my head, I'm like, it's struck a chord with me where I don't, the first four years of your kid's life are like, they fly by and they're the best. I slash the hardest, but they're like the times when they're learning how to be a wee person and you're always afraid that moments will pass you and you've missed them or like you'll be like, we're with our kids all the time, but I mean, distracted. Yeah. Like remember we were at Sleep Donard there recently at their like Santa trail thing and we literally said to each other, we were like, we like, this the, is brilliant. The kids were like so well behaved, you yeah. know, everything was great and there wasn't one peep out of anyone. Everyone was being, you know, happy and yeah. Winter was buzzing and stuff, but in our heads, we were up to high for no reason. And because you catastrophize situations when you yeah. have kids out and about, you're like, hey, any minute, either one of going to shit themselves and we won't have stuff with us, or someone's going to steal one of them, or one of going to fall off the roller coaster that they're on, or like every scenario is yeah. in your head that's going to make this the worst day ever, but actually you're just having a great time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had to stop and get Diesel on the way here with Rocky and Rocky shit himself and there was only three we wipes left we say shit left. himself he's a baby he shits yeah yeah but, like, he... but even the, the phrase shit himself sounds like he shouldn't <laughs> I know but he, he shit himself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there were there were three wipes left in the car and I had to use three wipes and I was like is Nappy uh, bag was there? I know I had a rummage and I couldn't find any but another story for another day <laughs> you know what I mean? that's not hang baby wipes like see the amount of baby wipes you go through when mm. you have kids they're ruining the environment I have to come up with a way of even nappies too. Nappies are ruining the environment. Ah, uh, but you, you can get uh, reusable nappies. But would you behold? No. Literally. Um. Somebody else said about 
the well, two. Well, what are your what are your resolutions? Oh, make more time for yourself, just. Yeah, I think like learn to manage the work parent life balance better, because I've already oversubscribed myself for next year as it is. Like my mm-hmm. next year is already too busy it's and I'm not going to cancel on some things because it's yeah. too much already. And I know that it's going to be the following year before I'm able to <laughs> settle down. And then I'm going to have... Even then it'll be busy. Yeah, but like I think, you know, like my first stand-up tour is coming out this year and uh, I want to prioritise that over doing 15 plays. Mm. That was one of my questions. Um, somebody asked me saying, how's your tour coming along? Your tour is um, obviously end of April, start of May. May, May and May June, and June. <clears throat> yeah. yeah got MILF tickets available now so we're going to take some time off in January like not from the podcast but from like other work and stuff yeah but you're still going to continue to write and develop your set and your material yeah I think like yeah I'll be prioritising that I think in the new year but it's um, it's it's a lot of it's there because it's like your first album, isn't it? Because it's my first hour, so it's your it's best like, off. Well, it's like what you've been working on for the past three or four years. Just whenever it gets to the second one, mm-hmm. it's the shit second album. That like that it's that it's definitely much harder. But um, yeah, it'll be grand. What are you? What are your thoughts about stand up for the foreseeable? Like I know you're sort of thinking that. Uh, I know, I know, I know, but I, I know, know you're you're doing a lot of producing right now too. Yeah, with our production company. Um, in January, I'm going to, well, I says to myself from January, I'm going to take six months off stand up and see how I get on. And I might never go back. I might go back in February, March. I'm getting offers every day for like how you fixed in April, how you fixed in March, how you fixed here. And I just have to keep fobbing people off and go, listen, I'm planning on taking six months, but I don't know. But obviously we have shows coming up and like that takes a lot of work. Yeah, of course. So like I'll be so busy. Like yeah, yeah. Hard and then I have both. my joke book coming out and then I have the second joke book that I'm gonna be writing and another book hopefully as well. Uh on top of other shows that we still have to write mm-hmm. and other things that we're doing as well. So I'll I'll be around comedy. I'll still be doing our podcast, I'll still be doing everything like that, but I just won't be at comedy clubs doing sets. Yeah, which is like, if, if if you see even a lot of the TV comedians too, you move into other things like presenting or sitcoms and stuff. Oh, and yeah. they'd be like, Wasn't oh, I haven't gigged in four years. Aye, it was it Josh Whittacombe we saw on like The Last Leg or something? And he was like, I haven't... He hasn't gigged in six was, years or it something? Couple, it was years. He was a like... Few, yeah, yeah, a few years ago he said that. Because he was doing sitcoms and all, so like it's, yeah. I suppose it's pretty normal. Um, yeah. A question I had him was, best and worst thing about having a two-year age gap between your kids? The best and worst thing. I I think even as a tip, I think when you, if you can get the older one out of nappies quicker. Why? I think it's great to have the older one out of nappies before the younger one is born, just because like Jesus, do you not remember at the start whenever winter was in nappies, first couple months of Rocky, our house was coming down yeah. with pissy nappies. Our utility room, they'd be like a mountain every day, and then you'd have to put them out in the I bin. Know, That's I not know. a thing too. I think if you go, <laughs> if you don't have kids and you go into somebody's house who has kids and you're like. Do you realise there's 30 used nappies in your <laughs> utility room just piled up and it like is like an actual shit fest in your utility room? You're all, aye. You come we down get, the we get rid of it at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you come, sometimes, some mornings you come down the stairs and I'd find like a, a nappy behind the mirror because we'd be at the top of the stairs <laughs> you and you'd just throw it down the stairs and you'd be like, I'll get it later. I remember a few days ago, I literally like just, I was carrying stuff down the stairs and I like... Played like play a bit of football. I pulled an appy out with my foot from behind the mirror and I kicked it round the corner. And then I just kicked it under the stairs and there was two other ones there. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to attend to this at some point. I know that even I spent Rocky to bed there night too. And I looked and there was an nappy like a rolled up nappy behind his door. And I was like, does our They're house everywhere. stink a piss? People must come in and go. Yeah. You just need to get like there's thirty nappies just like Easter egged everywhere around yeah. this house. That's why I keep a couple of other nappies beside my bed and I just piss in them and just roll them up and <laughs> throw it. So they're probably my nappies that you you're would, finding. You wouldn't need a nappy. Never has yeah. there been a man with a bladder more like a pregnant woman than you. I know, I know. I need the bathroom all the time. Relentless. Maybe that time you, that you got... A, a, remember whenever we were going through IVF and you got a letter to say you had a urology appointment? Maybe you did need it. Was that the camera up my ass? No. But maybe they were like, we need to have a look at your No, your it was completely... It was, a, it was a mistaken identity, wasn't it? Well, I, it might have been, but you also made a vote on yourself of an operation that you need. Well, why would they go up my hole? I don't know, but I think you thought... And what I'm saying is the fact that you have to piss that often, you might have actually needed a camera up your arse to have a look at it. Um, really? What do you think is the the best and worst thing about having such a gap between your second set of kids and your first set of kids? I think... Because, like, I mean, what is the gap? 
15 years. Between oh, between the older three and these two? Oh, I suppose, aye, like 12, 12, years, 12 years. 12 years, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the best and the worst thing is the same thing where you forget. Do you know what I mean? You forget a lot of this stuff. So as hard as it is going through it all again and relearning and yeah. having to self-teach or whatever, at the same time, enough time has passed where you can get a bit of energy back and start again. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think um, I remember being pregnant with Hunter and everyone was like, oh, because sure he's been there and done that and all, he'll know everything and you don't need to worry about it. And I was all... Couldn't I'm, remember a thing. I'll fucking football nap it here, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. What, been, what, what about for you? Um, I think it's babysitters. Yeah. It's handy. Do you know what I mean? It's handy having babysitters. But also winter, like, buzzes off because she thinks she sees all her big brothers like they're adults. Mm, she definitely does. Do Especially because one's in uni and yeah. Joe one's at his mum's more. But, like, fun adults. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the adults are, like, in charge of yeah. me because they're adults who don't have any responsibilities of her. So yeah, it's like great. They'll, they'll play hide and seek with her and chase her about and stuff like yeah. that. And it yeah, gives you time to do the boring things like empty the dishwasher and stuff. Yeah. So I think it, 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 that, that's obviously great. And then the other thing is, which is really hard, is because they've already established habits that we've realised we can't counteract anymore, the older ones. Mm. Like, so if you're sat down and like they're eating like chicken nuggets or whatever for dinner or whatever sort of bland food that they all eat and you're all, oh, I don't, you want the, you want Winter and Rocky to eat more adventurous foods and then they're sat there and you've you know, put a curry on their plate and they're like, wise up, he's eating chicken nuggets, why can't I have chicken nuggets? And you're like, I know, but we've already established we can't fix his mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Those mistakes have been made. Because remember when Winter was born and or before she was born in the build up, like the the, the birth, you were saying she is not going to eat any meat. She's going to live she off gonna like vegetarian. plants and all this here. And it was like, she had a fucking McDonald's at seven months. She did. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just didn't yeah, happen. but that's because I was vegetarian then. Hmm. Until I got pregnant with Winter and I could not stop the bacon. Hmm. <laughs> Just kept eating bacon. We yeah. started eating bacon every day then in the mornings. Um, but yeah, you, you have all these like things in your head that you're like, oh, this is where it's going to be. And it's it's obviously not. Yeah. Somebody somebody has contacted me saying, um, have you ever done a thing called Enneagram or whatever? It's like an online thing that we're not going to do now because it takes too long to decide your personality type. And some and they, then they sent another message and was all, I think you'd really benefit from knowing each other's personality type. Right. Do you know as if like yeah. then you can understand each other better? I mean, how long does it take to do that? No, it takes like twenty months. It's oh, like a false psychological thing. I looked it up, but it's also like boring. But um which probably is a quality of my personality. I'm like, that's too boring, <laughs> we're not there. We should do it sometime before we start the podcast though, and then you have your to results right. and we could talk to each other about our results. But it would probably tell us like, oh, you still aren't compatible or something. Do you know what I mean? But then sometimes that's a good thing. Do you know what I mean? To not be compatible? As in, like, it was only recently different. that I realised, you know, like, my strengths are your weknesses and your strengths are my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But together we make one really functioning, human. functioning <laughs> person. <Yeah. laughs> Pretty much. What do you think your weaknesses are? <sighs> <laughs> um, I procrastinate a lot. I find it hard to focus on one task. I saw a very interesting thing already about procrastination. Mm -hmm. And when you were supposed to be working? Yeah. You watched it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watched a video. It's when I do remember I started a sentence going by saying, I read this thing. Watched a video. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read a thing. A woman put up this video and she was like, I'm doing it I've been procrastinating doing a task, say cleaning the car for months. But now I actually have another really boring task to do, say our taxes. So now I'm cleaning the car so that I don't have to do the other one. Mm. But isn't that mad? Yeah. That you're like, you, you can prioritise the shitty things you have to do and you go, oh, I'll do that one then if it means I get one of them done. Mm. And I, you're just procrastinating further. But getting through the shit. Yeah. It's just so hard to focus though, isn't it? Like it's, one thing you've been doing recently where you writing for the blame game is working for 25 minutes and taking five minutes off. Yeah. And there's times you just like walk around the garden for five minutes and then come back in and start typing again. I can only work for really short bursts of time. 
Mm. And then I need a break. I remember my brother uh, used to do a thing where he had, he, he put like a, I think it was like he actually researched it further than I did. And there's apparently a specific amount of minutes that makes you the most productive. productive. And then you move, like if you move away from it and then come back, like you reset. And I think it is like 20, between 24 and 26 or something like that. Mm. And you set a timer and then you go away. Or he, like I think it's for people who have to read loads. After that, I think you stop taking in the information. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to read more? Because you started reading more that like last year, twenty twenty. Last year, I read a book a month for about the first six months, and then do you know what happened? I couldn't find a decent book to read. There's loads of books. I know, I know, I know. There's, I know. They've been making them for so long. Yeah, I hear. <laughs> but I went through a phase of reading like survival almost books or people living in the wilderness, mm-hmm. and funnily enough, mostly women who were either living on their own or living with their husband, but their husband would go off and like fly airplanes and do cargo runs for Sorry, people. Sorry, it's like the start of a porno. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. She's living in the wilderness. <laughs> she's chopping wood in a bikini out in the snow. The park Her ranger comes gone. in. gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? The pyre has gone out. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. It's so weird though that you're still so obsessed with all that sort of like wilderness I shout. Mm. I wonder why. Uh, it's, uh, I genuinely think it's because you want away. <laughs> no, it could just be like a an, a an escape kind of thing, but in your head, do you know, almost like kids who watch other people playing video games. Ah, uh, that's weird. But then you, but then didn't you say to me recently, like we watch Gogglebox? Mm, same thing. We're watching people watch TV. It's like unboxing and all those things. You must get a wee bit of a what's the what's the adrenaline like what's the um chemical that releases whenever you're oxytocin or mm. whenever you're like having a good time. It must it must you must it must trick your brain and. Uh, Thinking it's you that's doing that or it's you getting this thing. Because yeah. one thing I realised recently as well is that everything everything in your head, everything on planet Earth is about feelings. That's why you go on like a hotel a hotel break or a holiday or mm-hmm. um, you buy yourself something nice because you want a feeling and everything is just feelings. Well, this is appropriate actually for the new year because I, last year, um listen to a lot of stuff that was about how to break habits and how to form new habits. And it can be anything from like quitting smoking to exercising to work to spending more time with your family, whatever it is. And it's all about the feeling something gives you. So it's not what you think. So for instance, like for, say say you were like, say every day you had a bar of chocolate and you wanted to stop eating that bar of chocolate. It's actually what that bar of chocolate gives you. It's so if you looked into like what am I getting from this is it the break from my desk to dander down to the canteen and talk to people as I eat the bar of chocolate and if it is the socialising aspect of it then maybe just replace the chocolate with an apple and go down and do it anyway or if it's like smoking and basically that has given you an opportunity to get away from your desk as well and to go outside and talk to people or if it's given you 10 minutes on your own if you're if you're at home and you're a parent or if it allows you to like flick through social media or what is it that that habit it's not the thing it's something else that it's given mm. you and if you can recognise what it is that you're getting from it and replace the bad habit with a new thing that still gives you that feeling then you can mm. replace your habits do you know what I mean? Yeah that's interesting well, it's, it's psychology psychology is that what that's called? Yeah I'd know yeah. if I was able, allowed to do my fourth A level who stopped you? Let's go. This is doing it. You're smart. not capable of doing four levels. No, <laughs> <laughs> they there was a clash of timetable clash. Remember, I went and started psychology and outside a, I went and started psychology and like tech in the night whenever I was sixteen to try and do like a four A level because I couldn't do it in school and then I embarrassed myself with the lemon thing. Explain. I What's think this? I've set up no, but you know, um, I was doing a psychology class. <laughs> and it was all adults, and I was like sixteen, seventeen, and they were talking about how lemmings are suicidal right and I mean this is an entire lecture and the whole time my face is a guess and then I eventually put my hand up when I got in the courage and went I'm so sorry but can you I must have missed something at the start how can a lemon <laughs> kill itself <laughs> and everyone just went <laughs> oh, class clown has it, and I went no, no, no. Like I'm genuinely like I don't know how you talk. It's a fruit, and then the teacher corrected me, and then I was like, I am never coming back, and then I never went back. Diana. I know I could have been a psychologist right now. The thing I told you a minute ago might have been true. <laughs> <laughs> did you do something on the blame game recently too? Where you did a? <gasps> <Don't> do <that. laughs> do, it didn't do air on TV it? because did it, it not? No, because. 
I think the BBC were like, if we air this, we have to fire her because she's too stupid to on this <laughs> show. What happened, right, <laughs> was there was a story one week in the blame game about Prince Charles's drapes, the curtains in Buckingham Pass were being reused through some charity they were remaking them into outfits and then I made a whole joke about how you know Charles was just too like w- wouldn't spend the money on buying Camilla a house coat from John Lewis for Christmas so we got the drapes made into something and, and they were being made into kimonos and then I said Charles gifted Camilla the kimono which is great because she's loved Japan ever since the Brits invaded there and everyone on the panel <laughs> turned to me and roll. what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's all, what? And it's all, they never invaded Japan. It's all, I they did. And they, <laughs> and they were all, no, the Brits never invaded Japan. That's all, oh, what? That's all, I thought they invaded everywhere. And then you were like, Japan's massive. Hmm. So like they couldn't have even if they wanted to. Don't Too big. So. But I, I swear I wanted the ground to swallow me up. I spent the rest of the episode with a full beamer. <laughs> and then and then later on then, like a couple of minutes later, <laughs> I was doing another royal family, but I should not talk about the royal family because I don't know what I'm talking about. And I said something about, oh, and then it says, I oh, was about the drapes again, trying to redeem myself, going, I do know something. And then I went, oh, those curtains were up throughout Queen Victoria's entire reign. And I was like, um, they probably seen that much stuff. They probably seen, I said, there's probably many a night that like, um, old, old Vicky and Phil would have been at it and the curtains would have closed themselves. And they looked at me and they were all, Vicky and Phil? And I saw uh, Victoria and Philip. And they were like, she was called standards. Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all, they're all the same. I was all, fuck's sake. Scondered yeah. myself. And I mean, it was very hard to come back from it. So just from now on, just don't speak about the royal family. Or be or, on the blame game. <laughs> it was yeah. just like really, really embarrassing. Although my friend was in the audience and she was like, oh, it was about a crack. And I went, aye, it's all right when you're not the you're not the stupid bitch who pretended there was a full <laughs> war. I was all, and, I, and the thing is too, is I am still convinced Britain invaded Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on Google anywhere, but I'm convinced. It's in the history book somewhere. It just it's sounds like something they do, January. doesn't it though? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It sounds accurate. Hmm. And then, no, I can't even, I don't even. No? No. I was about to ask something about Hiroshima, but I don't even know what I'm, I don't even know how to frame the question. <laughs> it's like, even stupider. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that happens all the time. Like you always say to me, I, no, as soon as that happened, I was all like, oh, geez. But I regularly will argue the point just to stay right, even know, though, know. you know, like they're yeah. be arguing something that comes to the point where you're all, oh, I know I'm wrong. Only the past four or five years I've understood that. And sometimes I have to admit I play at your own game and I try and convince you that you are wrong and you've just made stuff up in your head just to try and make yourself... It's called ghosting? No. It's not. Gaslighting? Gaslighting. (laughs) (laughs) Flick, flick. What do you want me to... (laughs) It's called gaslighting. That's a real... That's really bad. What do you mean? It's not. Right. So if you say to me something about like... You try and tell me a fact, but I know that you're full of shit. So I, or no, so I, it's it's like you thinking you're right and I'm thinking I'm right. Yeah. So I try and make up a fact mm. to tell you you're wrong and to prove you're wrong. And I believed you When before. I don't know, yeah. Well, do you know what it is too? I think when you say things with such conviction, like there's somebody in both of our lives that we respect and always thought, and always do, and we do believe that this person's very smart. And do you remember the pepper? With the dog? Yeah. Do you want to say who it is? Do and say who it is? No. Don't say who it is? <laughs> right. So we were told one time by somebody that a dog, if, if a dog's it's definitely like, my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if a dog like is pissing around your front door, pour pepper everywhere, and then when the dog is going to piss <laughs> wind will blow pepper up its, its holes <laughs> and burn its arse and it'll not pee there anymore <laughs> and we were like surely it's that the dog sniffs the pepper up it's like it's no 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 burns his arse <laughs> and obviously he's just like our doc- he has like a he's like a, a master's and a doctor I don't know but we were just like oh he's a smart guy maybe we're wrong <laughs> yeah but it's when you say something with such conviction that people would just assume that you're right yeah, that's it. Which is something that you've got away with for a while. Uh, I don't know if conviction is the same as arguing. 
I'll just be like, no, I'm right. You're good at both. It depends on who's in the room. Like I couldn't, I couldn't argue with the 400 people sat in front of me in Blackstaff last week that I um, that the Brits invaded Japan. I was like, okay. Are um, you googling it again here? No, no, no. I've I've accepted that. You have that I don't know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, do you have any goals for this year? As um, a question. Do you know, as going back to almost like the resolution kind of thing as well, I'm thinking of giving up alcohol entirely. Like we don't drink that often, and when we do, Snowfest. it's a couple of drinks. You say this too often. I know, I know, but I feel like no good ever comes of, do you know, like when, even if you have a couple of drinks, for what reason? Like there no, is a bit of a release. Disclaimer, <clears throat> the yeah. last time you were drunk was years ago. Yeah. But like you're talking about just having a couple of social drinks, you're like, what's the point? Yeah. Me you and your mate member got blocked in our house one night. Do you remember the about song Stop ago? the Cavalry? No, it wasn't. It was, it was way before kids. I guess three years ago, about four years ago then. It was about four years ago, <laughs> maybe, yeah. And um, we sang Stop the Cavalry, like marching around our, our living room. That was a great night. Flora was brilliant. It was a good night. Uh, what was I talking about? Go. No. H- have we been on since we went away with the ki- from the kids? Overnight? No. For my birthday. Because so, uh, a few people have messaged me since then, been like, how did you get on with being away from the kids? Because it's the first time. It's brilliant. We did, but it was more just like... A, a genuinely right for anyone who's really concerned because l- the amount of people that have messaged me saying my kids are four and five and I still haven't left them overnight and they're like, you just up, you just worried about leaving them with anybody even though you know they'll be fine. But honestly, I was grand, wasn't I? Yeah, you were, you were. You and were, even like yeah. Rocky was up for an hour and a half in the middle of the night with your mum and I was like, well, that's what happens. And it is was, what it is. And he was yeah. fine. He went back yeah. to sleep then and we've all lived to tell the tale. Yeah. And it was worth it just to reset, wasn't it? Just like have 24 hours. Even though I was up at fucking five in the morning. We were both up there. Cleaning up. No, you got up about eight. No, I didn't. I was you up did. from about six till about seven and then I fell back asleep. And even eight is like on a child free oh, no, morning. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, but I would, genuinely, anyone who's like been like, oh, I can't do it, you can, because I was, I would have been somebody, who, if, you, if your 40th hadn't have been coming up there in December, I would not have arranged to have left the kids for another, mm. till your 50th. Yeah. I'd have been like, that's, that's it. They'd be babysitting each other. They'd be babysitting, yeah. They'll be at uni. <laughs> so I was like, so proud of myself that I had done it. And, and it was brilliant. You pulled out all the stops. Yeah, it was a great night. And people say to me, like, you know, oh, what did you get for your birthday? But it was what you decided this year, which was brilliant, was to just buy me experiences rather than actual stuff. I hand you gifts to open them. Yeah. 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 And it it was class. We got to an Airbnb in Bushmills. Yeah. uh, A a barn. Yeah. Which was convertible. We called it Old Bushmills Barn. It was unbelievable. The Old Bushmills Barn, yeah. Um, Beautiful setting, beautiful barn, beautiful, like, interior and stuff. We got there, your brother and his wife was there, my brother and his wife was there. Yeah. And we had a brilliant we, singer come out. Oh yeah, yeah. Colin what's his surname? I'll find it in two seconds. Um but he was class. But do, do you know what I remember booking a singer going, it might be a wee bit rare and saying to him, Here, listen, it's gonna be dead rare because there's only six of us, so it's gonna be a really small gig for you. Like bring your amp and all, make it loud, but it's gonna be fucking rare. It was and, phenomenal. And it wasn't rare one, but it was Not class. One bit. It was the best gig he's ever done. Yeah, I think he, he said. was gonna do a, a proper gig afterwards and he was like, I'd rather just stay here because it was yeah. it was great crack. Uh Colin Graham music yes, on Graham. Instagram. Colin underscore Graham underscore music. He was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. So good. Every song the way he asked him for, he knew. Yeah. We sung along to every word of he every did song. Of everything. It was like a mini concert, wasn't it? It was and Brilliant. you know what? You'd be surprised how many glasses of Prosecco would text you to forget your kids or with somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <Do you mean? laughs> I went to, uh, my, my brother got me like a, the green and white Liverpool shirt yeah. and he handed it to me. I think it was like an hour before Colin got there and I was like, oh, I love it. Thanks very much. And I tried it on to see if it was fit, but I had that many, to see if it would fit, but I had that many drinks in me that I forgot about it and I stayed on. over your shirt the rest of the night? over my shirt the rest of the night. But then I went with my brother last night to play indoor football and he goes, oh, have you just had your dinner? I was wearing the top and I was like, it's fucking bit of pizza. From, from that night? From that night. <laughs> a big stain on the white bit of the shirt. He's drinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was grand. We survived the night as in mm. I survived the night being away from him and then we went and got them and brought them down there the next day and it was great. Yeah, we had a cocktail masterclass too, which was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was from from beginning to end. It was just it was unreal. Big Christmas trees and stuff up uh, decorated for Christmas. What are we gonna do for my fortieth? Ah, oh, fuck, I don't know. In twenty five years time. Yeah. My fortieth has actually ages away. There will be no worry about leaving your kids then because I here, what was that? Look about it as ages away. Aye, but you're not fifteen right now. Don't start I'm joking, that. Joking, obviously. I know. <laughs> 
but uh, I'm not even 35 yet. Hmm. So we've, well, got, we've got five literally years. Literally your next birthday. Yeah, I know why, but that's not yet. <laughs> it's in two months. That's how time works. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, um, I had to download an app recently and it asked for a six digit passcode and I put in the 27th to the 3rd, 89. And then I mentioned to you about it and you were like, my birthday's the 20th to the 3rd. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You would have got you, I've done your birthday not there. Just, it was something we both had to access, was it? Mm. So you were like, I've done your birthday. And then I was like, that's not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to remember my birthday wrong. So, <laughs> and we did that. Remember at our wedding too. I ordered a. It's like I had a couple of jobs today, and one of them was to buy the pen for the registry. And I bought a pen with the date of our um, wedding day on it. And when it came, you were like, "Oh fuck's sake, this is the wrong date." Hmm. And I was all, "Oh no!" And then you messaged the. Uh, I sent, sent a, a photo of it. of it to your mates and they were like look at this dickhead he's got a pen with the wrong date and they were all do you know that's the right date and we were all away <laughs> <laughs> both of us didn't know when we were getting married right <laughs> it's so ridiculous isn't yeah. it? that's classic us but I know I know like even dates for like shows and all coming up that we're producing or we're in or we've written some and go what about and I have to like go on Google myself to find out when they are yeah we had to do that for I, th- I don't mustard. know if we mentioned this for our Elf in Belfast like we wrote it about two weeks, three weeks before Wait, the start of rehearsals. And um, and and just before we started writing it, we had to go on to the Grand Opera House website to read the bio that we submitted in like May or June because be like, we didn't know the what the show, show was about. Because <laughs> <laughs> Castle Court got in contact with us and we were all, oh, it's brilliant to see that you are setting, uh, your, show in Castle setting your show in Castle Court. We should collaborate. Yeah, and like, we were are like, we? are we? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know we'd set it in Castle Court. We took a look at that. Yeah. Um, right, Annie. Um, I, have a, I have a few oh questions I, that people sent me just quickly. in case people go, why haven't you asked my question? Let me just see here. Um, New Year's resolutions we've done. In your eyes, what's the key to a good, healthy relationship? Um, th- these are not things that we do all the time, whatever, but obviously it is communication and Fingram. Yeah. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely communication. And trust too. I think trust is massive. Is yeah, it? yeah, because I've been, I've, I've been in relationships before where, you, like, the the person wouldn't leave their phone sitting out in front of you. Do you know that sort of way? So I've been in relationships been in before. <laughs> have you actually? Do you know that sort of way? We're like, you yeah, know, yeah. you don't want each other to see what's on your phone. There's also a thing about bank accounts. Like, I, I do think sharing a bank account is a really healthy. That's not everyone's decision, but I think sharing finances and sharing a bank account is a really healthy thing to do in a marriage. Apparently, you're less likely to get divorced if you share a bank account. Good luck, anyone subtitling that. Fuck me, the speed you spoke there. Was it? Ah, Jesus <laughs> Christ, that was lightning. Apparently, you're less likely to get divorced if your husband doesn't slag off the speed <laughs> that you talk <laughs> at. Yeah. Do you remember even though, like, within the first week or two of us meeting, we, like, argued so much over who bought stuff that it was just like, right, just you buy just one more bit. Just, it just didn't matter. Yeah. So close after getting together. <clears throat> it, um, such a gold digger. But it, it, that's apparently that's that's one one of the things. Hmm. Um, is there any other questions before we finish up? Uh, I forgot to put my phone away. away. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's what she said. Um, with the success of Elf and Belfast, what's next for your production company? We actually have a show that we just put out there last week Sex or the week before. Sex in the City Hall. Sex in the City Hall in the main stage Grand Opera. This is like, for anyone who doesn't know, we started our own production company um, off the back of a few shows that we had written a few years ago. We have now made Home Malone, which was out last year in the Grand Opera House studio. We had Elf in Belfast that was out just there in December. And now we have our third show, which is our biggest to date, Sex which is going the, the main stage in the Grand Opera House for a week and also and a two tour. week tour before it. Mm-hmm. Which is and there's a class cast that we're not announcing yet, whatever. But it'll be it'll be brilliant. It'll be yeah. one of those big night out comedies. Just get on the banter bus. You yeah. hate the word banter, but there'll be so much banter. That's all right. Banter it up. Yeah. Um. I so the do you do you remember what that show was about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. About people being trapped. Uh, four girls work in city hall. And they find they get. So an we email. haven't written it yet, but we've decided what the show is about. So that's yeah. why I'm t- t- quizzing you. They get an email. To say that one of them is about to be fired because they're downsizing that department, so they hold a lock-in in City Hall. Yeah, they and say they refuse. no surrender. Yeah. to one of them losing their jobs, and they spend the night in City Hall barricading themselves in, and they refuse yeah. to leave until all four jobs are secure. Yeah, so civil servants fucking buy them up. Yeah, um, right. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, stay safe, stay sexy. Back next week with another episode.